Hello, I'm Julian Gollop. I'm the game designer at Snapshot Games. So, uh, obviously, working on Phoenix Point at the moment, a very, very exciting project. Um, I was just wondering, what are the current features that you're working on at the moment? So, actually, at the moment, we're working on the procedural generation of the battles, which is a major, major aspect of any XCOM-style game. Um, with a number of different environments, and the main ones are these havens, which are controlled by factions, and they have all kinds of different installations in them, factories, residential areas, research labs, uh, perimeter walls, and the uh, battles are usually in one particular zone in these havens, so we have a fully procedural generation system. Um, and also we are working on the alien mutations, so aliens in Phoenix Point uh, all have archetypes, but they can mutate and develop different abilities and uh, different strengths and weaknesses which you have to tackle and find a way to overcome during the course of the game. And uh, so you mentioned they're kind of like these environments and they're, they're fully destructible, right? Yes. So what challenges does that pose to both players and to you as designers? Uh, it does indeed pose a challenge to the players in the fact that um, you cannot entirely rely on cover because it might not be there. So for example, we have these very large scale monsters um, which are capable of destroying most elements of the environment. Uh, and at the same time, you have to use the cover to hide from some of the ranged combat enemies that you'll face. Uh, so it's a question of balance of um, uh, deciding where you can reliably stay for a short period of time, basically. <laughs> Uh, but from the design point of view, it's quite challenging because we have to simulate structural integrity of uh, buildings. Uh, we have to generate lots of debris and fractured elements in the game, so this is quite heavy on the actual engine. Uh, it is quite a challenge, yes. One of the things that, so we know kind of like the uh, Phoenix Point uh, features soldiers with different weaponry and stuff like that, but you've previously mentioned that vehicles are potentially going to be a part of the game. Vehicles are going in the game, yes. So I was wondering, um, that, that sounds very different from the sort of combat that we're used to. You know, we, we know how XCOM combat works because we're used to your original games, we're used to the Firaxis games. Uh, how does vehicles swap up the dynamics of, of play? Well, the main thing the vehicles do is give you some alternative ways for uh, deploying troops. So most of the vehicles, the ground vehicles, are uh, troop carriers of various kinds. Um, so for example, you can, you can load up your squad or start deployed in a vehicle. Um, the vehicle will move very quickly across the battlefield, safely deploy a squad into cover. Um, some vehicles are also armed. Some of them can be used to ram uh, terrain and, and make a uh, just to clear it, clear a way through areas. Um, it's it adds an interesting dynamic. Um, it, it doesn't completely replace the need for infantry because again, in built up areas, you know, just the mobility of people and feet is is, is very useful. Um, but we'll see. It's interesting. <laughs> You've got factions in your strategy layer, and they sound like they add a a fascinating kind of almost 4x element to the game. Um, could you tell us about how we interact with those factions and what benefits they can provide us? Yeah, so there's three basic ways you can interact with the factions. Uh, when you encounter them, they will often request assistance for defending the Havens, for example, and by offering that assistance they will offer certain rewards, especially recruits. You can trade with them if you've got something that may be valuable to the faction and they've got something that's valuable to you, you can do exchanges in that way. Um, you can um, ally with them as well, this is a much higher level. Um, if you form an alliance, you are obliged to help defend them. In the meantime, they will share a lot of their research and resources with you. Um, there's also a possibility that you can just go in there and just steal their stuff, raid their resources, sabotage their, you know, whatever you want to do, <laughs> entirely up to you. So there are many different ways to relate to them. Of course, all the actions you take in the game alter the uh, diplomatic relationships between the factions and between you, the player, and, and, the, and the different factions. And the factions offer um, numerous different flavours in terms of like the lore of Phoenix Point. Yes. So just wondering if you could give us kind of like a quick introduction to who you would consider the strangest kind of group that you have? Yeah, sure. The strangest faction are definitely Disciples of Anu. So they're an extreme religious cult who believe in uh, that an alien god is coming to rescue humanity. <laughs> uh, but they have 
religious rituals which involve mutation um, and they can control the mutations. So they're try constantly trying to mutate humans into better soldiers or better human beings uh, as their main objective. Uh, in, in reality, they have a secret technology that allows them to do this. They just dress it up in religious terms. So they're definitely the weirdest, though. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so we, we will, as players, if we ally with them, will we have access to this strange mutation technology? You will be able to gain access to it, yes. And you can use it on your own soldiers. You can also uh, recruit directly some of their uh, soldiers. Okay. And they will have various mutations with various abilities including the Mutog handlers. These are guys who have telepathic control of these special mutant creatures which are uh, cloned by Disciples of Anu. Now, of course, it's not. It, it, all of this mutation comes from the aliens themselves. Exactly. And uh, I was just wondering, could you talk us through sort of like uh, where your ideas came from for this mutation and how you've been able to apply them to your alien devices and stuff? So... Uh, I guess the idea came from this concept of a Pandora virus, which does exist. So um, the oceans of planet Earth are full of viruses, and we know very little about them. And some of them are enormous viruses with huge genomes. So we speculate that actually these genomes could be um, partially alien. Um, they're dormant on planet Earth, and they get revealed by melting permafrost. They've been here for millions of years, and as you discover as a player there have been past outbreaks of this Pandora virus uh, and I guess the idea part of the sort of Lovecraftian aspect to the to the game is this idea that what is alien is hideously alien but this idea that it can sort of merge with humanity and create something horrific uh, is I guess part of the sci-fi horror aspect of the of the game itself and the, the look that you've gone for, as you say, there is a Lovecraftian sort of element there. Uh, yeah. It's very crustacean and stuff like that. Yeah, so initially, uh, the mutations combine sea creatures and human creatures. Later on in the game, there will be different kinds of mutations, which will involve elements of different animals that you might find in various parts of the planet. Um, there are lots of possibilities as to the types of aliens and mutations that you will actually discover. I've noticed that kind of like um, as we start to see the the aliens sort of like develop range sort of weaponry, and they've got almost like heavy machine guns like welded into their flesh. That's and right. Stuff like yes. That. Yeah. So yeah. they've specifically mutated themselves into highly specialised gunners. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are using Earth-based technology. They they are intelligent. They're sentient beings at this stage in the game, anyway. Um, so they are capable of of using technology, uh, but they also are capable of building these vast. Um, organic structures for which purpose you don't know at the start of the game you have to play it to find out <laughs> do the mutations uh, occur in terms of if I in my playthrough let's say I developed a certain technology or, or, or acquired something on the way will they be able to react to that and, you, and if they find that in the battlefield after defeating me will they be able to mutate with that well the way your mutation system works is is there's a random element to it as well sure so um, but what they do is a trial and error system. So if they find a particular mutation is not performing well in battle because you've learned how to deal with it, uh, they will mutate it. They'll try and come up with something different. Uh, and if your mutation starts doing well, they will try and deploy more of them up to the point where you figure out ultimately how to, to combat it. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the basic process that the aliens go through. Um, and it does mean that if you do try different strategies and tactics from one game to another, you will inevitably face different kinds of opponents. Sure, so it's completely possible that I might not see specific mutations that you've yep. seen in your game. Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool. Uh, in the, one of the very earliest kind of like videos that you put out, there was what looked like an incredibly huge creature, larger oh, than yes. what we've the even Beamoths. seen in this. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. I was just wondering, could you tell us a little bit more of those and how they interact with us? Uh, yes, so these are coming at a slightly later stage in the game when the aliens have built vast structures which can actually um, gestate these creatures. And these are like giant harvesters. And they are harvesting massive amounts of organic matter uh, in order to, to continue construction. Um, they're very dangerous because if they reach a haven, they will literally just stamp on it and kill it. Uh, and they're very difficult to kill. Uh, you need to deploy a squad on top and literally deploy drills to drill through their carapace. 
Um, they're highly resistant to most explosive weapons and you'll basically be fighting tactical battles on tops of these creatures in order to try and take them down. The look and feel of the game um, obviously has influenced has been influenced by the Firaxis kind of reboot of your sure. own game. There's certainly a, a certain amount of that, and it feels like you've you've learned from them. But there's a very clear kind of layer to this game that's, that feels very much you in terms of kind of like it feels what I remember XCOM like from 1994. There's a, an added layer of complexity to it. Yeah, it's added layer of depth to it. I mean, we we have more flexibility in the tactical system, so it does have a sort of time unit system like the old XCOM in it. Even though the presentation is very similar to the new XCOM, we also have more inventory management, um, multi-classing characters, um, a lot more flexibility in the loadouts of your characters, um, many more sort of classes that you can use in terms of developing your characters. Um, it, it has basically elements of the old XCOM and new XCOM, and uh, I think I would say it's definitely an evolution, uh, it's a mutation, if you like, <laughs> of both old and new XCOM, and uh, I think it's looking really interesting so far. I was just wondering, have uh, Firaxis had a chance to talk to you about what they've seen of your game? Not yet, actually, no, no. Uh, That'll be interesting, because I know that yeah. you and Jake Solomon have certainly had words before about how much you That's admire right. each other. I would love to show it to Jake uh, next time I see him. I will undoubtedly talk to him about it and mm -hmm. <laughs> see what he thinks. Exceptional. Well, thank you very much for talking to me, Julian. Thank you. It's been lovely to see you. It's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you.